Okay, welcome back to the second Spiral Spy tutorial by Tovak. This is Tovak, and um, first thing you'll notice is I lost my old night that I was working on with you guys last time. So, in this tutorial, I'll be covering how to build sets, and in the next, I'll show you how to edit and save your characters. So, um, what we're going to do right now, since we're making a new set, is um, the first thing you need to know about sets is um, it's a really meticulous process it takes a long time so I'll show you some shortcuts and um, we'll see how it goes so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go up to the um, bar at the top of the screen I'm going to go to edit um, toolbar is going to pop uh, scroll bar is going to pop down I'm going to click on preferences and you'll see this new window pop up. Now what I like to do is I like to have the full effect of my preferences so I'll fit it to the side of the screen. I guess it doesn't fit by default so I'll just use old fashioned methods. Um, I like to fit it to the side of the screen and first thing you'll notice is that you can change the color of the background to all these annoying really vibrant neon colors. We're gonna leave it gray for now because I'm actually going to show you a much better system. Um, for now, I'm going to go up back into the main window, um, go back up to the toolbar at the top, um, click on View, right next to Edit, and you'll see I have some options here. Now, you can play around with the options, and they'll show all kinds of new things up on the screen, but I'm turning everything off. So there's a compass that shows you where you're looking so you don't get confused. There's a grid that'll help us later. We'll bring that back up later and there's some bounds and you can even edit um, to choose to see environment so that environment will show all your preferences um, that you've put on the screen so you go back to the preferences window and you're going to go down and click new environmental model now um, under environmental model you'll see much like how we've been editing our nights um, there is a config option you go to config but this is different. It's going to start you out the last place you were at. So with this guy, I was in accessories, um, bomb bundle. So I'll go up. It'll be front, armor, accessory. I'll keep going up, uh, gear, item. And now I'm back to our main panel, our, RS, our RSRC, which I've come to know as resource. And it has all the resources you need for Spiral Knights. So we're going to come back up to here. This is going to be your main file where you're going to find everything in the game. Everything is right here. If you go up any more, <laughs> if you go up any more, you're going to um, hit. If you go up any more, you're going to see some other files, and you're just going to confuse yourself. So try to stay in at R S R C or resource. Um, now at the very end of all our, our little files here, you'll see world. You want to double click on world you want to go into your skyboxes. This is a fairly simple set that will help you if you're focusing on just making a new model um, to get rid of this gray gross background that you're just sick of looking at. You're going to, you're going to click on the model viewer option and you're going to pick model dot that and just double click on it or go down and click open and it's going to bring up the model viewer world. Now this world automatically generates a um, ground that fades into black which is really nice when you just want to edit with your files and you can even see how they look on different textures you have graveyard grass island day um, lost castle and you have some white space tiles at the bottom so I'm just gonna stick to stone right now but actually I'm even gonna go so far as to click out of the model viewer system because we're building a set right now so you go out of the model viewer, but you're still going to need a skybox because you don't want that crappy gray stuff. So you're still in all the skyboxes, and let's say this set's going to be in the clockwork tunnels. So you click on clockwork tunnels. It's fairly simple. And then you're going to go under models. You open up your model. Uh, model dot that. Sorry. You'll have your um, variant selector when the model actually loads. Mine's loading slow because I'm uploading the last um, video at the second. It won't actually go this slow in um, real time. So I'm just for my own preferences I'm gonna pick deconstruction because I like the black and the orange, I like Halloween colors. Um, so we have the deconstruction zone background of clockworks and it just changes the color scheme 
So you have surface clockworks and cold clockworks, etc. But I'm going to keep it as deconstruction for now. Um, so what we do, if we want to make a simple scene, I'm going to show you really small, really basic scene making um, as to not overwhelm you with information. So you're going to go and make another new environmental model, go under config. This time you're going to click out of the world file. You want to get back to your RSRC file. You can, um, so just go back up. And now we, we act. So you're actually going to go back into your world file. Sorry, I spoke too soon. You want to stay in the world. Now, instead of clicking on skybox this time, you want to use your tile sets. So you go into your tile sets and you find the clockworks you want to use. You find the set, the. So you go into your tile set and you find the variant that you want to match your skybox. So we're doing clockworks. I'm going to pick clockworks, and then I have a a bunch of options here. You have four. You have floor, fences, edge rails, and walls. And I'll show you what each one of them are, and I'll show you how to move them around in the set. So I'm going to start with the floor because my night is floating right now and it'll bring you to floor base dot that sometimes they have several files you'll have to figure that out on your own but this one has one so it's fairly simple now as always they always have a variant and uh, floor tiles are just a pain in the butt and they have a bunch so you'll have to play with that again to see every single option you have but I'm gonna go down because I know my way around and uh, floor plate 5 is my favorite one to use now this is where we're going to bring back up the grid the grid's going to help you in spacing your tiles and i'm going to show you how to not have to place so many file tiles because as you see one tile is one grid marking and it can get rather tedious so what i generally do is i try to stay between um, one and three size scale you'll see down here in the preferences window that there are transform options Transform is how you actually move your um, object. So if you click and hold on the up or down arrow on any direction, um, it'll move it in that direction. And we'll actually bring our compass back up in our main window by going to view and then going down to compass. And that will help you um, determine what, it, what, um, what letter corresponds with the direction. So as you see, the compass is saying X is the horizontal plane, Y is the forward and backwards, and Z is the vertical plane. So Z in our transform will make the the um, tile go up, um, set it back to zero, it'll stay flat on the ground where it should be. Now back to what I was getting at, I like to stay between one and three scale when I'm making these four tiles because if you make them too big the textures will go away and especially with plates like this you kind of need the texture. So I'm going to scale it to three and it will obviously get bigger and it fills three times the spaces so now it's filling uh, approximately nine grid squares so um, positioning this under your night now is fairly easy um, I've learned to for sets you don't need to play with the rotation tools they'll uh, just rotate the tile and we'll get to what you actually need to use rotation to tool for later but you use the translation on your transform and it will move the tile now it's snail mail clicking one at a time in any direction and it takes forever holding it is better but it still doesn't get the job done so what I do is I click on an arrow and you can actually drag in one direction or the other and it moves a lot more smoothly it moves a lot more quickly so you can actually make your sets a lot faster so just if you can see my mouse you just drag in one direction or the other left or right and um, while holding down on that arrow and you'll um, you'll notice how much faster it moves so that's how you make a basic floor plate now moving on we still have a couple more items to cover so I'll try to cover them really fast here um, we're gonna give we're gonna put everything on this so we're gonna put we're gonna utilize all four things now um, when you're shooting something like a comic, like you might have seen my comic, Taking It in Stride, um, it's kind of weird to have just a floating platform. So what you want to do is you want to go into your edge rails, and you have edge busted set for clockworks, which is busted rails. It's a set certain type of rail. You don't want busted ones. You want normal ones. So you go into rail, you bring it up, 
it's going to start on your zero position and rails are weird because these are all built to be seen from spiral night um, angles like this so sometimes if you look at them from below you'll see cracks now if you just bring it back up to the default angle and you can use the translation tools like I taught you before bring it forward now I know my way around so you use the variation tool and you pick the rail that you actually want and if it has um, you can read the file names and some of them are by default larger than others and the textures are set just right so rail catwalk times three means it's three times as big as a normal catwalk um, piece so I'm just gonna put it in position here and um, get it perfectly angled with that check checking the specs on my other item to line them up perfectly because the translations are going to equate to one another so now I've got it all where I want to go um, normally you make more to make it not look so weird and floating by itself but this will do and that kinda gives you if you want to make a camera camera angle or a certain scene you can actually look at your night and um, not have weird floating blocks yeah okay so now our night needs a backdrop so you don't just see into the foreverness of the skybox so we're gonna give him a wall behind him we're gonna open up the wall palette um, I think these roof gears are spinning cogs they're weird items sometimes you'll find really weird items in there with your sets you just need to look for what you're looking for and it's normally straightforward as I've said before as to what everything is so you go into wall.dat and you get your walls so the walls are really small and kind of annoying as I said before there's a times three option so there's times three and times two and they'll be a lot larger to scale for walls and um, edges it's a lot more important to stay to normal scaling because when you actually edit the scale tool you'll end up with walls that should be in a giant's home like all example here make this wall size five and it's super thick now and oddly proportioned so you normally just to extend length you want to use those times three options like I said before so you're going to move this uh, object to where you need it it's already set to the zero scale but for me it always looks like they're floating so I like to move the Z down a little bit so as I said before using that translation tool Z is vertical and I have just moved it down into the plate a little bit there's no weird clipping and it kinda looks nicer it doesn't look so floaty and um, I have positioned it with all the other tools and you might be wondering what fences are um, they're in the game they're basically another form of walls but I'll play with them here um, I'll do a fence high so you can see it better they're like the columns you see in certain levels and sometimes they can be piping I think there might be some pipes in here um, what is this there's yeah weird see-through walls and then if I go to fence low there's some um, ones that look like pipe let me see if I can find it I think it's just at the end here yeah they'll, they look like piping and they'll, they'll just look like other things and it kinda just adds some variation to your map wherever you want to put it um, it's not too important but that those are fences um, and that should be everything you need to know for um, using the for altering your um, environments now just one last note I want to say that um, going back to that rotation tool if you want to make a Cali Wampus environment or something look destroyed the rotation tool just allows you to rotate your object object so you have to play with the axes um, because they're normally set in weird ways like you'll see this one spinning on its corner sometimes they're spinning in their center so you just have to play with um, where the axis is and um, just see how you'd like everything to be positioned if you want something to look messed up you can change it to make it look messed up or sometimes as I said before there's specific ones like if you go into edge rail busted you'll get these busted rails that show up so there's already some destruction variance in your um, options so you don't always have to be so self-reliant on everything so it's just looking through the program and seeing what um, what it has for you to play with.
Now, um, that's all for preferences. In my next episode, I'll be showing you how to save this little bugger right here so you don't always have to come back and make a new knight. I'll also be showing you how to switch textures on his armor, and I'll be showing you how to permanently um, add items to the model itself.